The eastern hemlock is Pennsylvania's state tree. If left undisturbed, they have a potential lifespan of 900 years, and they play an important role in our ecosystem. They are essential to the survival of our state fish, the brook trout. Hemlock forests create a shady habitat, which keeps the water running through it cold. The brook trout need cold water to survive. Tragically, we are losing our hemlock forests to an invasive insect known as the hemlock woolly adelgid. Invasive species are species that have the capacity to expand their populations rapidly and dramatically, so they, they tend to take over areas and displace other species. One of the most important invasive species problems Pennsylvania is currently facing that's not a plant is an insect called hemlock woolly adelgid. It's a big name for a little tiny insect. Uh, but this little tiny insect, which was introduced to the United States, to the East Coast in the 1950s, it's from Asia. Uh, this little tiny insect can kill our native eastern hemlock trees. OK, we're standing in a 40 to 60 year old second growth hemlock forest. This area uh, shouldn't look like this. The area that we're at has about 80% of the, uh, the needles and the foliage of the trees missing. When you're in a place like this, it should be very dark and very quiet. And it isn't today. If you look up, you can see straight through the canopy of these trees. Uh, in fact, the lower 40 or 50 feet of the trees have no needles at all. Uh, the only place where we see any lush growth is at the very, very tips of the trees. And that's typical of what hemlock woolly adelgid infestations do. They kill the trees from the bottom up. Um, it's a very difficult place to be and a difficult forest to, to reforest or to recover from. The hemlock woolly adelgid is a small aphid-like insect that infests uh, the hemlock trees and is actually a sap-sucking insect. And it will draw the life and nutrients from the tree at the point where the, the needle attaches to the stem. Uh, it is covered with a white woolly mass, which grows out of its body, much like wool grows out of a sheep, which is why it's called the woolly adelgid. Invasive species seem like an impossible threat to overcome, and there are different solutions being researched. Near the Delaware Water Gap at Eco-Scientific Solutions, they are breeding a special beetle from Japan that could possibly control the deadly adelgid. The benefit of biological control, of course, is that you have solved the problem over time through restoring a balance in nature. The potential problems with biological control is when you introduce a new organism into an environment, will it be specific to what you want it to do? Or will it get out of control? Um, ladybugs. Everybody is bothered by ladybugs. They are a great biological control on aphid, but they also have turned out to be quite a nuisance. The beetle that we're producing, Pseudoskimnus sugi, only eats hemlock woolly adelgid, and it strongly prefers certain life cycle stages, and it will only reproduce if it gets to eat hemlock woolly adelgid eggs. Uh, we keep this room cold because we are able to prolong the life of the branches as well as keep the adelgid eggs longer, and then we take the eggs from the adelgids and feed them to the beetles. Then the beetles, in return, will produce more eggs. In each of the jars, we have the adults that produce the eggs, and then we put them into these boxes, and five weeks later, we collect those adults and ship them off to the Forest Service. I don't know, John, they top to the, some of them. Some of these. Well, if we look at this one, and this is, there's a couple there. This one here looks pretty clean. These, really, John, this is the future of this hemlock forest. If we can, if this fence can keep the deer off until these trees get established, um, and we can get some control of the adelgid, maybe, maybe we can restore some of this hemlock forest. Why should someone care about the displacement of native species and the loss of native species? Um, you know, if there's tree of heaven growing out in the woods instead of Native American chestnut or hemlocks, 
you know, why does that matter? It's still a tree, it's still growing, what's the difference? The difference is that they're changing the whole ecosystems and the way plants and animals interrelate. So when you lose one species, other species are very much affected and they also go extinct. Forests are fundamentally important in the local environment as well as the global environment. Forests produce oxygen. They absorb carbon dioxide. They, they, they're, they're like gigantic air fresheners. When there's torrential downpours from hurricanes or, or thunderstorms, the soil in the forest absorbs all that water and soaks it up and holds it, and then slowly releases it over time. In contrast to a place like a parking lot, when the rain comes down, it just immediately runs right off the pavement and goes right into a stream, and that increases the, the flooding problems and the erosion and the sedimentation, which then cause more problems downstream. It may seem like one, what one person does may not make that much difference, but it's for that reason that we all have to work together and we all have to be aware of it and try to maintain our native plants and native species.